thank you everyone for uh, joining us online. Uh, we're here in St. Paul in Green Hall on the University of Minnesota campus. Uh, we're really pleased to have uh, John Carlson uh, with the Minnesota DNR with us today. Um, there's been a lot going on in uh, private forest management, uh, particularly with private woodland owners. Uh, and John's going to give us um, some insights and uh, some recent happenings with uh, what's going on in the DNR and really talk about the delivery options uh, for private woodland owners uh, in Minnesota. I uh, wanted to mention a few things before we get started. Um, with the webinar uh, WebEx system, uh, you should see a, a full screen now. If you don't, you can minimize that uh, just by going uh, to the top bar, uh, and then you'll be able to see um, a, a couple of items that are of interest, uh, one being the chat area. Uh, so we encourage you to submit questions as you have them. Um, a few of us here in, in St. Paul, either myself, Eli Sagor, or Emily Dombeck, will field those questions to John. Um, and just and, and when you send those questions, do send them to all participants. Uh, that way, everyone uh, can kind of see what's what's being asked. Um, and then other items, I think we'll have uh, continuing education credits um, that'll show up at the end of the webinar. Um, and other things, as you have questions, uh, definitely please relay them to us, and, and we'll get them to John. Uh, and so with that, I think I'll I'll turn it over to John. Well, appreciate it, Matt. Thank you very much, and thank you, Eli and Emily, for. Let me participate in, uh, in your webinar series. Uh, so I graduated from here, a forest resource degree, in 2000. So it always feels good to get back on campus. And um, you know, I'm really looking forward to, to doing this for you today. So with that being said, there is um, there's a lot of, uh, oh, hold on, let me, uh, I was going to tell you. So my background is I, I graduated here in 2000 with a forestry degree. And then I went around uh, to Maine and a little bit out west in firefighting. And then I became a forester for the DNR, field forester for the last 15 years. So I got a lot of experience in that realm. And then here recently, about a year and a half ago, I took the uh, private forest management coordinator position, which uh, that position uh, I'm in charge of, you know, delivering, you know, private uh, land services to, to woodland owners across the state. So and there is, um, it's a very complex program. You know, there's a lot of different uh, uh, groups of landowners out there. And there's a lot of programs available. So the goal today is to help um, you sort those out. Uh, it's kind of a, a daunting landscape. A lot of times you may have some ideas what you want to do, but you don't know where to go. You don't know who to contact. But there's different pots of money with different rules and what you can do and where you can do it, and also delivered by different agencies. So today I'll, I'll lay out kind of the, the main options that are available to you as a woodland owner today. And I got a lot of stuff to go over and I, I might talk fast sometimes. Um, and I'll have some links available, of course, where you can follow up with some information. So uh, with that being said, I'll get started. So here's the outline of what I'm gonna talk about today. So first we're gonna start with uh, management planning options. Okay, and that's property-wide options. What are the management op options available for your entire property? And then we're also, from there, we're going to go then and talk about what are the project-level uh, options that are available to you. And then I'll touch on some of the uh, special project areas that are around the state, and there's some kind of unique opportunities to receive assistance. And we'll, we'll touch on some, some places you can go for sources of information, you know, other than ones that are listed related to the programs. And then at, finally, we will talk about how you can get involved and how you can take action and get something done. That's the ultimate goal. Okay, so we're starting with property-wide management planning. So, so what is that? So when I say property-wide management planning, I'm talking about a forest stewardship or a forest management plan. And so what that does is you, you, you get a more big picture of what your property has and what your options are. And so, you know, asking the question, you know, why would I get a get a woodland management plan for your property. You know, some common answers might be that you want to improve your woods, but you don't know where to begin. You know, so if that's you, you're, you know, a great place to start is getting a, a forest management plan done. Or you just need more ideas on how you can improve your woods. Maybe you've done some work before, but you, but you need some more assistance. And then finally, uh, something that is kind of realistic that's out there is owning your woodlands, you know, can be a burden financially and there are ways you can uh, receive tax incentives once you have one of these management plans written for your property. So those are probably the three most common um, reasons why you would get one, but it's certainly not the only reasons, but those are some of the bigger ones um, you know, that I'm hearing about out there. 
So, so what program is out there? What delivers um, property-wide management planning? Well, the big one, it's called the Forest Stewardship Program. It's a federal program that's offered you know, nationwide to all the different states, and it's, it's delegated to be uh, administered by the state forestry agency. So in this case, that's Minnesota DNR Forestry. Um, so that's one of the major programs that's under my umbrella. And, and that's the program, it's kind of the backbone of private forest management or PFM. You might hear me refer um, to PFM uh, more than once in the talk today. It's kind of the backbone of the program of, our, of private forest management. It's how you can get your foot in the door. It's going to lay out all your options. It's going to get you in contact with the right professional. And so what that program does is it encourages uh, long-term stewardship you know, of, of, of important state and private forest or state uh, of private forest landscapes by assisting woodland owners on, on, on actively managing their forest. Um, so it, it, it provides you technical and professional assistance to get that plan. And so the, the product of that program is called the Woodland Stewardship Plan. Most of you, I'm sure, have heard of this. Sometimes you might hear it called the Forest Stewardship Plan. And sometimes those terms, Woodland Stewardship Plan, Forest Stewardship Plan, are used interchangeably. Technically, it's the Forest Stewardship Program, and the product you're getting is a Woodland Stewardship Plan. So what exactly is that? So there on the right, you're going to see a picture of, of the current binder. So when you get a plan written, it's a, it comes in a big binder. And there's a lot of reference material in there for you. And, and what, what you get in there is also a professional management plan written by a forester. And in order to qualify for that plan, you need at least 20 acres of land that's, that's non-ag or non-developed. So that land should be, be, able, should be able to produce trees um, or it has a positive influence or impact on the watershed, which could also be a wetland or a brushland. And once you get this plan, it's good for 10 years. And this, the, these plans are written by a DNR approved plan writer. And the bulk of these are made up by private forestry consultants around the state. And in order to become one, you have to have a natural resource degree and you also have to maintain continuing education credits annually. So the DNR, we maintain that list. And some of the benefits this plan can get you is you can qualify for tax incentives. I'll get more on that later. Um, but basically what happens is a professional forester will, will meet with you and you'll discuss your goals. You'll tell that forester what your goals are for your property. And then that person will go out, walk your woods, and come up with a plan to help uh, meet your goals. And as they're walking through their, your woods, they'll be looking um, at, the, at the trees and the woods on your property, and they'll be, they'll be breaking them down by um, size and species. So we call that a stand, or a stand of trees. So they'll, they'll break up on a map using an aerial photo and put it in your plan. And I'll show you that in a second, what that might look like. And they're going to give you, they're going to describe what's in that stand, what's growing, uh, what condition it's in, um, what they see. And then they're going to give you some specific uh, recommendations of some management that you can do in there. And then they might even give you some other additional ones um, that they, they think you might be interested in doing. And so, like I said, consultants are going to write most of those plans. DNR Forestry would also writes plans, and I have what our fee schedule is right there down at the bottom. And one thing I want to mention, and I'm going to mention it again, is talking about uh, some new opportunities available. So right now there's a $300 incentive payment currently available for anybody that uh, gets a new woodland stewardship plan prepared. So I really encourage you, if you're on the fence or you don't have a plan yet, is to take advantage of that. That hasn't been around um, for a long time. And so I encourage you to take advantage of that. And that also would hold true for a plan that's being updated after 10 years. So let's just take a look here what uh, I, I talked about. They, a map is created, and it's broken down by cover types, which would be different size and species of trees. So here's just an example, and this is one I had done in the past. You can see uh, the forester will go out there, they'll break up your, your land, and they'll, they'll number the cover type, and then they'll label it, and they'll provide you know, recommendations for each cover type. So that is, in essence, um, you know, what, what a woodland stewardship plan can bring you. Again, it's, it's, it's the backbone of, of PFM. And uh, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of things you can get out of that plan if, if you, uh, you want to follow through with it. So to find more information on that, instead of putting the web link on this one, I just, just Google MN for a stewardship, and that'll bring you right to 
DNR Forester's uh, DNR Forestry's Forest Stewardship page, and you can see you can get more information on there, including a list of approved plan writers. And I'm going to show you that list a little bit later on. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the other uh, property-wide management planning options uh, is, is titled the Forest Management Conservation Activity Plan, or for short, a CAP plan or a CAP 106 plan. You might hear this being referred to. This one is uh, administered. This is also a federal program, but it's administered by a federal agency, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, or NRCS for short. And so this is similar to a woodland stewardship plan, but they do have some additional criteria they include. You know, so that would be one difference. Another difference is, is they'll actually, they actually provide you a cost share payment to get this plan written. And sometimes it's a fairly um, decent uh, incentive in order to get that plan. And this one is not written necessarily by approved plan writers, although they, it certainly overlaps with these uh, writers. But these are only written by NRCS staff, where they have what they call technical service providers, or, or TSPs for short. And those are you know, private consultants that have gone through NRCS training in order to, have, to, to be qualified to write, write a CAP 106 plan. And so and the process is a little different here. So if you want to get one, uh, you only get one if you, if you receive an incentive payment. And so what you end up doing is you will apply through an NRCS office, and, and the payment is delivered through the EQIP, Environmental Quality Incentives Program. I'm going to touch more on that later. But you would basically apply, and, you, and they have a ranking period application deadline once a year. So if you applied right now to have, get a CAT plan, you'd be waiting till sometime in 2017 before you found out um, if you were selected. So if that's something that's important to you, where, where that, that payment to get that plan prepared for you is really important, um, that would be one reason why you would, you would go through this over the forest stewardship, or the woodland stewardship plan. Otherwise, they're really similar plans. You can use a CAP plan to get into 2C and SFIA. The plan would just have to have a couple minor requirements that the, the, the CAP plan doesn't already have to make it eligible for a woodland stewardship plan. And the plan writers are pretty familiar with that and they can walk you through that. So for more information on a, a CAP plan, you would, you'd want to contact your NRCS office. And there's the web address on there for that. Otherwise, you can Google NRCS EQIP Minnesota. So those are the two property-wide management programs. And I'm just going to touch on, I had mentioned the, you're eligible for a couple tax incentive programs if you have uh, either one of them plans prepared. Um, so the two of those are, first one is uh, Sustainable Forest Incentives Act, or SFIA. And that is administered by the Department of Revenue. So in order to qualify for that, you need to have a current woodland stewardship plan written by an approved plan writer. Right? And current means it's, it's within 10 years old. So uh, when you get a woodland stewardship plan, that plan is good for 10 years. And so you'd be eligible for this program for 10 years. And what that program does is, it, encourage, it gives you an incentive payment annually to encourage sustainable use of your forest lands. So what you're doing is you are you're enrolling a covenant with the county recorder. And what that means is your, your land that's in this program is bound by a covenant, meaning you can't develop it for agriculture, you can't develop it for uh, you know, building a house or, or anything like that. The intention is to, to keep, that, keep your forest lands forest land and encourage forest use. And so in order to re reward you for that, you get, a, you get a payment per acre every year for those acres. And those payments are taxable. So in, recently the payment has been $7 per acre. And there's been some changes coming on that's potentially coming on this program. There's been a bill in legislature to um, have, have different uh, length of requirements for the covenant, either eight year, uh, 20 year, 50 year, so that they can, they'll have longer covenants potentially available, and then the payment will be higher if you enroll for that longer option. So this is just one option for you. One other thing to mention too is, so it's an eight year minimum enroll enrollment, and if you want to get out, you have to provide written requests, and then it takes four years for you to get that land away from that covenant. So, and a new applications are due on September 30th. So if this is something you're thinking of doing, get a with a stewardship plan by uh, current plan writer, and all the plan, plan writers out there are very familiar with this program, so you can ask them about this uh, as well. And the other tax incentive program um, is actually uh, a tax reduction on your land, and it's called uh, 
your, so your land would then be classified as a 2C tax classification managed forest land. So this one's administered by county assessors, and it actually reduces your tax rate down to 0.65%. And similar to SFIA, you, know, you can't uh, convert any of your land or, or subdivide the property. And this one also requires a current woodland stewardship plan written by an approved plan writer. And another additional thing, the plan must be registered with the DNR. So what does that mean, registered with the DNR? It means a DNR forester has reviewed, so after the plan writer prepares that plan, a DNR forester has reviewed that plan to make sure that it meets the program specs uh, for the forest stewardship program. And then after the plan is okayed, it goes back to the consultant, and then they deliver the plan back to you. And then that, that, that landowner, then you'll, your name will go on a registered stewardship plan list that we send to the county assessors so they know that you're eligible to be in 2C. Um, and, and again, that program, unlike SFIA, that's eight years. This one is only one year. So you apply every year, and May 1st is the deadline. And so that would be the 2C. And to learn more about those two programs, I have up here the DNR's Forest Stewardship webpage. But in there, there is an excellent link produced by the University of Minnesota that's also on the My Minnesota Wood page that, that compares the different tax incentive programs really well. Um, so you could also Google MN2C SFIA, and you can find that information there. So I'm kind of at a transition point right now. So we talked, I just talked about uh, your management planning options, the Woodland Stewardship Program, or CAP 106 plan, and then the tax incentive program. So if there's any questions up to this point, I could uh, take a pause for a second. Yeah, John, we do have a few questions. I hope they're coming through on the mic, but maybe, uh, maybe if you could briefly repeat them. Uh, first one is about the Woodland Stewardship Plan. Uh, are property owners allowed or encouraged to join the forester on the walk through their woods? Yeah, the question was, is uh, the, the property owner encouraged to join the forester when they walk the woods? Absolutely. I would say you're absolutely encouraged to do that. You're, certainly that's not required. That would be up to you. But the more you're involved with the forester, you know, the, the, more, the more you can convey some of the reasons why, why you like your woods so much, which you wouldn't. Uh, normally be able to convey so convey so I definitely would encourage it. Uh, next question you mentioned the, the CAP 106 plans and you mentioned that there is a, um, uh, a possibility to get equip funding to cover the cost of developing that plan. Uh, what would a landowner expect for that? Does, is the funding to cover all expenses associated with that plan preparation or is it a cost share at a certain percentage or how does that payment work? Sure. I think it kind of it, it can. I think it varies on the size and, and where your acreage is. Um, oh, to repeat that question is, is, is does the the incentive payment for Cap 106 plan does the payment full is it intended to fully cover the cost to cover part of the cost? Um, I, I think generally Equip looks to cover about 75 percent of the cost for what you're getting. So that's kind of what you can expect. Um, but that being said, it, it, there are times where you know it, it maybe covers almost all the costs or maybe times where it covers a little bit less than that 75 percent but that that's the intention but a considerable it covers a good good percentage of that cost. absolutely all right yep. the, the last one oh and i see that looks like you don't need to repeat the questions i guess they're coming through okay, okay good uh, last one is a comment um uh, about 2c uh it's important to note that the tax rate may already be lower than 0.65 percent if uh, the land is in ag, homestead, green acres, rural preserves, or something, another program like that. Yeah, and that's a great point. I did not mention that, but before you, it has happened before, where people have enrolled, enrolled in 2C and their taxes actually went up because they were already receiving a great benefit. So if first thing you should do before you enroll is talk to your county assessor, look at what your land is being taxed at, and see if that makes sense for you. All right, and then uh, one other one, question I have about the $300 incentive payment. You mentioned that that's fairly new. Can you just mention briefly how that process works? Does the forester apply for that? Does the landowner apply for that? Um, what's the paperwork involved? You mentioned the delay for the cap plans of yep. several months. How does that $300 incentive work? Yeah, so that $300 is, is kind of tied in with our cost share program for projects. It's the same application process. So I'll kind of get in a little more detail on right. that. But essentially what, what you're doing is you are, you, uh, 
you qualify for it if your plan is uh, in progress or before your plan has been written. So if you've already had a plan delivered to you and it's complete, you know, you missed that opportunity for this time. But if you even have a plan in progress right now with the, with the consultant writing your plan, you can contact your local DNR forestry office. You can start an application and then that, that only takes a matter of within a week to get those funds approved for, approved for you. And then once that plan is uh, then you would have to register that plan with the DNR. And once that plan is registered, then you would, you would get that $300 payment. So, Great. Yeah. Thank you. That's Great all point. the questions we've got for now. Okay. So there is our management planning and tax incentives. So, so now we're going to talk about project level assistance. So now we're, we're narrowing our focus down a little bit. So we're going to actually do a project within your, within your property. So why would you, question, why would you seek assistance for a woodland project? Well, one, now you have a stewardship plan, right? Now you want to start implementing it. It's a great idea. Or you want to do a woodland project, but you need or would like financial help to do it, and that's called cost share, and that's what we have available. Or you have an idea for a project, but you don't, you don't know the best way to complete it. So that's one of the benefits of, of this whole, you know, our, the services is you can get, you'll get a professional forester out on your land to develop a project for you at no cost, you know, so that's a great benefit. Not only that, you'll, you'll receive something in return. So here I'm just going to give you a few project examples of what, uh, what you could do out there. So in this example here, this is one I actually did. The goal of this uh, person was to improve wildlife habitat. So they already had some conifer trees planted and they wanted to improve uh, they want to improve their wildlife habitat by increasing uh, their oak trees, you know, acorns for, for, uh, to be edible by wildlife, primarily deer. So he had a major deer problem on this property, so we, we planted uh, in, them inside of tree tubes, which is going to improve the growing conditions and protect them from deer browse. And then because there was heavy grass competition, we did an herbicide spray as well. So that what that does is that'll free up the roots from competition so that those trees are able to take on nutrients and water more freely and grow faster. Another example could be you're looking to improve forest health and productivity. You know, so what, what would that maybe look like? Well, in this example here, the prescription was to thin out first any undesirable trees. So if you look in the front here, you're going to see those are four elm trees, and you'll see they're double girdled with a chainsaw. And that is a method to, you're cutting off the, the transmission between uh, the roots and, and the uh, tree and the crown, and that tree will then slowly die in order to end. Sometimes that's not enough to kill an elm tree, so you also look up a little bit higher, you'll see some, some hacks in the bark, a small hack. And that is called the hack and squirt, where they also sprayed an herbicide in there, and that will help. Um, kill that tree faster. So the whole point of that is you're getting out, it, it, again, it depends on your goals. In this case, wanted to get those undesirable trees out to, to allow more uh, room for more desirable trees to grow that maybe produced a, a better benefit based on um, the landowner's um, goals. And another one might be, maybe you want to um, increase plant biodiversity. So in this case, uh, this person had um, potential oak savanna habitat. You know, that's where you have more sparse uh, oak, you know, growing with some mixed uh, prairie and forb grass. And some of those habitats have been declining over the years. And so using prescribed fire to restore that is a, is a great way to do it. And so that's an example. And here's one where maybe your, your goal was to protect water quality and, and reduce soil erosion. So here the, there is a, a woods harvest here. And afterward, there's skid trails. And if you leave those alone, you can sometimes develop uh, soil erosion problems, which could degrade water quality and, and degrade your soil in your, in your woods. So here a dozer came in and they smoothed out the trail, and that's, that way the water you know, can run off of the trail. And then there's berms that are put up right there. They're called water bars, and that's to keep the, get the water off of the, off of the trail. Because if it stays on there, it can create a gully, and that gully can erode, and then it, the problem um, can get a lot worse from there, and it'll, it'll put sediment in the stream down below. So those are just some examples. There's a lot more, um, you know, there's a lot more forestry projects available. And so there's three financial assistance options primarily available for cost share. And again, when I, when I say cost share, I'm, I'm referring to, you know, the, the agency sharing the cost with you. So typically it's 50 to 75% of the cost to do that practice you're getting reimbursed for. 
So there's state cost share programs, federal cost share programs, and also county. So I'm going to go through the three of these here to let you know what's available. So of course the first and the biggest one um, right now that's available today and which is one that's under my program yeah, through the DNR Forestry is uh, we just had a cost share program launched here last month. This was the first time since 2010 we've had it and it was a real successful program in the past but um, at the time of the recession you know the PFM program was short on funding and we didn't there wasn't money available to do that. Well now after the last legislative session um, luckily for us we got some money available and so the opportunity is there for you to get funds immediately. And so in the past you used to have to have a woodland stewardship plan to receive uh, cost share. This time you don't. We wanted to open it up to everybody. And like I was saying, a professional forester does actually prepare the plan for you and that's done at no cost. We don't have a minimum acreage. It's going to be up to the, the uh, DNR forester that's working with you. Um, obviously, you know, what we don't want to do is we're not doing landscape projects. You know, if, if you live in a in an urban area, in a small lot, you know, those kind of projects aren't going to be eligible. So it's, it's more if you live in rural areas, you know, you have larger blocks of woods or even a small block, but it's in a rural area that might have an impact on the, on the ecosystem there. And like I said, you're, you're roughly reimbursed 50% of the cost to install the project after it's complete. And so what is that process kind of all about? So first thing you're going to want to do, if, if this is something you're interested in, is first you're going to contact the DNR Cooperative Management Forester, or CFM Forester for short. Those are the DNR foresters that primarily work with private lands. So they're going to be the ones, they're going to be your first line of contact if you have an application to start. They're going to be the ones you're going to be dealing with. I'm going to give you their contact information later. So get a hold of your, your DNR CFM Forester and then discuss with them what type of project you're thinking of doing. Um, you know, maybe let's just use tree planting, for example. That's a common one. So you say, hey, I want to, I'd like to plant some trees next, you know, next spring. Yeah, I hear you have money available. And so, you know, then, yep, you've got money available. Um, but you, maybe you don't know exactly what you, what you want to do. So then at that point, what will happen is that forester will then go out to your land with you. And you'll walk your woods and you'll determine a project area on the ground where that work is going to take place. And so what will happen is then that forester will, will flag that area out typically or paint a boundary. And then they're going to write a project plan that's going to lay out some uh, specifications of exactly how to carry out that project. And then that, that, app, that uh, project plan, you'll, you'll take that back to the office or the forester will have it. And then you're going to fill out a, an application. And then you'll submit that application with uh, that project plan. And then your, fire, your, uh, your funds you know, will get secured. And it usually, like I said, it'll be within a week. So if you went in tomorrow and applied for one of these, within a week you'll have typically funds available to you. So there's a very short turnaround time. And then, so let's just say then you get your funds approved. And so then you just wait until that project gets completed. So if it was a tree planting, you wait till next spring when you're going to plant your trees and then you can either do this work yourself or you can hire out to a private consultant. It's completely up to you. After the work is complete, you'll notify uh, the DNR forester and then they'll go out and actually inspect to work, inspect the work to make sure that it was done according to the project plan and, and to verify that it was completed. And then that payment is then made to you. So what does a project plan look like? Here's an example of uh, one from the past. So they're, generally these plans are they're, they're more they're simple, they're short, they're one to two pages, and it'll have a map of your of the project area, and then it'll lay out the, the specifications. So in this example here, this person was the goal was to kill invasive species such as honeysuckle and buckthorn. So there's some prescriptions in there that identifies how to do it, what to target, and what chemicals you can use. So again, there's we got a lot, there's, there's, there's money available today and at the end of the year it goes away. But next year, if, if there's any left over, that money goes away. But there is plans to continue this moving forward. So expect next year money to be available as well. So, so it's, it's there on a first come first serve basis this year until June 30th. So I encourage you to, if you have any idea what you want to do or you don't know, contact a CFM Forester to get help. And again, there is, there's a link right there for you to go to. Otherwise, you can Google 
Google MNDNR financial assistance and you'll get to uh, a web page that will explain uh, the process a little more and also give you a link to the to the DNR Forcer to contact. So that is the state cost share option and that's a big one. Um, there are also federal cost share programs that are, that are available and two of them are administered by the NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service. Um, first one is the EQIP, or Environmental Quality Incentives Program. The other one is the Conservation Stewardship Program, CSP. And then the Farm Services Agency also has CRP, which a lot of you heard about. So I'll touch on these for you. So the first one, uh, the big one for NRCS is EQIP. And this program delivers cost share incentives to, it's primarily geared towards agricultural producers, farmers, but they also do allocate some of their money for forestry, for, for non-industrial or family forest woodlands. So this one's administered by the Natural Resource Conservation Service, and it's, it's similar in a way to the um, state cost share program I highlighted. They have their own set of practices to choose from and different payment rates, and I, I believe their target payment rate is about 75%. And DNR foresters do actually do write uh, plans for EQIP. And also these are done by NRCS staff, where again, they also have their technical service providers or TSP. So there was just a, usually they have an application deadline. Um, recently it's been once a year. So there was just one uh, we passed in August and they have not announced the next deadline. But I'm, I'm anticipating it'll probably be in August next year. So if, if this is something that you might be interested in, you can submit your application at any time. That application will wait until the ranking period uh, whenever that's announced. And then that application, it's a competitive process, so it'll, it'll actually be ranked. And then at that time, you'd be notified if you were to receive uh, funding. Something I should mention here too, um, which goes for the state cost share program as well. One important point is that you, should not, you cannot start work before you apply for that project. So if there's a project you're thinking of doing, um, in order to be eligible, you cannot start the project until you have the money allocated to you and have a written plan. Unlike the stewardship plan where that one, that one you can have in progress. So that's a little different there. So to start an application for EQIP, uh, there's the address or, or Google NRCS EQIP Minnesota. Another program is a conservation stewardship program by the NRCS. This one's a little bit different. It actually rewards uh, participants for existing conservation performance. And it's kind of more of a reward program. So you're not actually getting a, a you're not getting a professional forester out there to write you a plan. Um, these are five-year contracts with the NRCS. It's going over a complete overhaul for 2017. So there's a lot of details yet to be worked out on the changes. But you'd get an annual payment based on past year's performance. And the higher the performance, the higher the payment. And you also would need, a, they would need to adopt an additional enhancement, at least one. And so, like I said, this is kind of, they're, they're doing a complete overhaul. There's, a, there's nationwide, this is a big program, especially for, for agriculture. And they have a lot of money allocated to this program. So if you're somebody that, that does forestry work, I would encourage you to look into this. You know, even if you didn't get cost share on a project or you want to do more projects, um, Contact the NRCS and see if, if, this is a, if you can take advantage of this program and, and reward you for the, for the good work you're doing. So Google NRCS CSP Minnesota. The other federal one I'm going to mention is the Conservation Reserve Program, or CRP, and that's administered by the Farm Services Agency. A lot of you are aware of that. Associate that with an egg land and see a, a prairie. More than likely that is in CRP. And so this, your land actually has to have, you have to have a crop history. You have to actually be tilling and farming that land to be eligible. And so what you're agreeing to do is you're taking that land out of production. You're putting in uh, a cover, which is usually a prairie or even trees. And then you go into a 10 or 15 year agreement and you receive annual incentive payments for the duration of the contract. And they have general signups, which happen periodically based on what comes out of the farm bill. Right now there's none announced, and that's a competitive process where you're ranked with other applicants. And there's also a continuous sign-up for some more focused um, uh, projects that they, that they look for, the FSA, and those can be taken any time. So if you're interested, if, if you have some ag land that we'd like to take out of production, 
and put it into prairie or trees, and I encourage you to contact the FSA office at MMFSA CRP. If you Google that, you should get their web page. And last one here is, is there, out, there is some county cost share available through the Soil and Water Conservation Districts, SWCDs. Now, one thing to note here, too, one of the, first is one of the things they also offer is annual tree seedling sale every spring. So if you'd like to do tree planting, definitely get a hold of your, your SWCD office in your county. And, and SWCD is, of course, specialized in water quality and soil protection. And they do actually have foresters around the state. And so depending on the county, they, they, they offer different levels of service for you. But the cost share that they offer is, in, is within some of these special project areas. And I'm gonna, I'll touch on those later, so I'm gonna, I'll come back to, to this uh, later on in the talk. But, th but that is what they, what they offer. So you can contact your SWCD at, uh, at MN, if you Google MN SWCD. Also, not necessarily, not necessarily for cost share, but another project, uh, or project level assistance that's, assistance that's available to you is obviously timber sale assistance, okay? And there's not cost share typically available because you, you as a landowner would already be receiving uh, financial uh, money from the sale of your timber. So that's why there isn't cost share typically available. And a lot of times if, if you have a timber sale you're wanting to do, you might just go directly to a logger. I'll provide you with the logger list here later. Uh, but I definitely recommend if you're thinking of a timber sale is to contact um, a professional forester and most of the time that's going to be a private forestry consultant. DNR Forestry can also provide some general advice, you know, maybe let you know if, if a timber sale is right for you and then a lot of times at that time we will um, refer you to a consultant or we'll also give you a list of timber buyers. But if time allows we do also um, offer timber sale service and the fee there is for 13% of the sale value. And what you get out of that is the forester will appraise the timber, determine the volume and value, send it out for bids. The, the bids will come back and you, can, you would select which uh, logger you would have, harvest your property. And then of course they would also paint the sale boundaries and then give you some project specifications. One thing a state forester can't do, a DNR forester, is then once the sale starts, they can't administer the sale. So that means when the logger's out there cutting, that state forester can't go out there and enforce or, or provide recommendations on what to do. Private forestry consultants, on the other hand, they can do that. So that's a definite advantage to having them work with you. And they can do all the services that a DNR forester would do. But in addition, they'll be able to administer your sale for you. And then they can also tell you uh, they can recommend certain loggers and, and uh, 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 buyers that they've worked with in the past. Um, the state forester is non-biased. We can just give you a list. So that's another advantage going with a private forestry consultant. And so, yeah, so that's next thing I'm going to talk about is special project areas. So does anyone have um, any questions on any of the cost share options available? Um, just taking a look now. Yeah, it looks like we do have at least one. Uh, question is, are school forests eligible for the new state cost share? They are, yes. Okay. Absolutely. School forests are eligible. Yep. How can a landowner decide which cost share program to use? Well, if, if the information today wasn't enough for you, and you don't know where to go, the thing I'd tell you to do is contact the DNR, Cooperative Management Forester, CFM Forester. So I'll give you their phone number, and that's going to be for anything. Um, if you know what you want to do, here you're getting the contact information to go do it, but if you're still not sure, contact the DNR, CFM Forester, tell them what, you, what your thoughts are, what your plans are, your goals, and they can help push you in the right direction. All right, uh, comment. Uh, tillage is not needed for riparian pasture areas. Uh, that's a focus area. I think okay. says. So that might be in reference to um, was it CRP in one of those? Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't know all of the some of the requirements in CRP. But that. But yeah. Thank you for that point. Yep. And then the last last one here, at least for right now, unless any others come in. Uh, for the conservation stewardship program, how is performance measured? You mentioned 
And you mentioned a lot of changes, so maybe it's not very clear right now, yeah. but you said that that's a performance-based program, and so you get paid based on actual performance. Uh, do, you, do you know, can you say anything at all about yeah, to, that? To be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with, with that program. Um, but my understanding is, is you, you'll sit down with, with, the, with the NRCS field staff, and, and they'll evaluate it. And I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think the performance is maybe more based on if you did a, did a practice or not. Um, but other than that, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how that works. So that's something. They have some good information online. They have a landowner checklist. You know, they, they, they show you what some of the practices that, are, that you can get um, a payment for. So definitely you have more questions on that, contact the NRCS office. All right, great. Thanks, John. And just to, for folks out there, we will be sharing all of the links that John has mentioned throughout the talk uh, in an email to everyone who's registered. We'll also post those to the website, SFEC website, along with the report. All right. Thank you, Eli. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to talk to you about a few special project areas and, and unique projects going on in the state that offer additional incentives um, to, to woodland owners out there. And the first one I'm going to mention here is it's to promote golden wing warbler habitat. And the, and the whole, and this is administered by the NRCS through the EQIP cost share program. So they, they have special funds set aside to, to work in this area to, to promote young forests. And promote, by promoting young forests, they're, they're promoting the golden wing warbler habitat. Because this is, a very, this is an important range for that bird in Minnesota. They have important nesting habitat requirements, and so through this they're, they're looking to enhance that habitat for golden wing warblers and also for woodcock and other wildlife as well. And so like I said, that is administered through the NRCS and EQIP. And so how it works is you would apply for EQIP like you normally would. They have the same deadlines as, as the regular EQIP does, but the service that's offered here is, is timber sale or, or timber sale design service. So you'd be doing a woodland harvest, and an American Bird Conservancy, which is a group, you know, that's, that promotes the Golden Wing Warbler, they have two foresters. They have foresters that work in the state that work on these sales. So if you're selected for this, and, and the eligible counties are Lake, St. Louis, Kuchiching, Itasca, Aitken, Carleton, and Cass. And, and some of those counties, it might not be all of it, but at least a, a good portion of those counties are eligible. So American Bird Conservancy Forester will come out to your land. They'll design a harvest on your property to benefit the golden wing warbler. So they have certain things they're looking at, they're looking to leave certain trees, and by, that, and by doing that you're rewarded with an incentive payment um, in order to, to create that habitat for the golden wing warbler. So some of the payments can, they can be fairly good and it's, it's a great opportunity and so this would be in addition to sometimes maybe you're already getting you know some revenue from a timber sale, but the where this program is especially useful and what they really like to target is if you have woods that are over mature, you know, let's say you have an aspen stand that's, that's mature, it's falling apart, the volume is low, the price is low, so you can't, get a, you can't entice a logger to get in there without losing money yourself. So that's the perfect stand that, you know, that we would like to convert back to young, healthy aspen. And this program is, is a great vehicle to do that. So um, if you're in any of those counties, Go ahead and check that out and, and contact the NRCS office in Duluth at that phone number, or you can go the, to gwwa.org. Another special project area is Tulabi Lakes. That one's been around here for a little bit. There is actually a cover story on a recent DNR volunteer magazine about this project. And this is administered by uh, the county, that's the Soil Water Conservation Districts, the SWCDs. It's clean water legacy money from the Clean Water Legacy Amendment here in Minnesota. And so these projects must be linked to protecting or improving water quality. And so what we're looking to do here is uh, fisheries have done a study. Uh, so this map here is going to sh shows you the project boundaries in Minnesota. And these are Tulabi Lake watersheds. So Tulabi is a type of fish that's really sensitive to water quality. And what they found was is um, if uh, watersheds that had 75% forested vegetation was kind of the cutoff for when you started to see the water quality degrade and that fish population be affected. So what we're looking to do in this program is keep forest lands forest and protect the watersheds or increase forest land where it's not there. And in order to promote that, 
if you're in these project areas and you want a wooden stewardship plan, you can get a plan written for $200 regardless of the size. So that's a pretty substantial benefit. And there's also cost share projects available. I mentioned before the SWCDs have cost share. So this is where usually it's delivered. You know, so even if you didn't have a, um, you know, I take that back. You would, you would need a stewardship plan for that typically, but there's also cost share money available for these projects. So definitely uh, take advantage of that. And then, so what we, then the, the goal is to hopefully get you into SFIA. And again, that's an eight year covenant where you can't develop your land. So that's protecting it. And then also there's sometimes have easements, conservation easement money available where that your land can be, can stay forest land forever. Um, but sometimes there's limited funds for that, but you can certainly ask uh, the district if what's available. Another similar project to that, well, I, before I get to that, there's, there is actually a website on the DNR that you can see if your land falls within this area. And you can enter your address right there and it'll actually show up to see if you're eligible. So if you are, you'd want to contact SWCD office. And another special project area related to the Tula B1, because it also includes clean water legacy money. It's healthy forest for healthy waters. It's a smaller project area down in southeast Minnesota. There's no Tula B down there, but it's a similar goal of improving and protecting water quality. And like the other program, you can get a wooden stewardship plan for $200, and there's also cost share money available. And so if you are interested in that program, you can contact the Fillmore SWCD or Wabasha County SWCD. And those are special project areas. Anyone have any questions before I move on to the next section? I am not mm -hmm. seeing any questions okay. right now. We'll have time at the end. Right. And so now I'm just going to go through what are some general sources of information. Okay, obviously I've thrown a lot of information at you to get specific information on those programs. Um, you have a better idea where to go, but what are just some other you know, places where you can gain information? Obviously most of you already know about My Minnesota Woods if you're here on this webinar today. But I have to mention it because it's a great website for forest woodland owners. Uh, there's also DNR Forestry. We recently produced the Woodlands of Minnesota Landowner Handbook Series. Right now there's three handbooks that are completed and we're going to do 11. And those are handbooks that cover different landscape regions across the state. And the goal is going to be to complete them for every region of the state. And about 20% of that book is unique content for that landscape region. It'll talk about, uh, it'll get, one of the neat things it has is it has uh, some stories from other landowners in there that hopefully it'll help you inspire to, to do something with your woods. And it also kind of has a workbook at the end that can help guide you and, and help you thinking about goals in your property. So these you can get, um, I'm gonna show you a website here that you can get that information. You can see what uh, areas are covered and you can get a paper copy at your DNR forestry office, wildlife office, or even SWCD office. Otherwise they have ebook um, and a PDF version here on this website. So definitely check that out. There's another landowner uh, private forest guide that was recently put out by the Sustainable Forest Initiative. And the best, well, the place I could find that is on MLEP, is the Minnesota Logger Education website. I'll show you that in a little bit, or mention that. They have an online version of that document. So if you go to MLEP's website, you can get a copy of that landowner guide. Tax advice. Let's just say you have uh, some tax questions with your property as it maybe relates to a timber harvest or things along those lines. There's a resource for you. He actually works in Wisconsin in Gary Searfoss feel free to contact him. He is more than willing to help Minnesota landowners as well, so you can contact him for information. Also, there is, if you're thinking at all about a timber harvest, the first thing you should do is dial Minnesota Forestry Association's call before you cut hotline. If you dial that number, you'll get sent a packet of information. It's no obligation to you. Inside that information, there's a lot of uh, reference material for timber sales. There'll actually be a sample timber contract. You'll have a list of professional forester contacts, logger contacts. And so that is a great resource. I um, encourage you to contact that. And also get involved. All right, join the Minnesota Forestry Association. This is a landowner group that works behalf on family forest owners through education and advocacy to promote stewardship of woodlands. Um, it's a great organization. Um, if you're looking to get active, that's a great place to start. Also, uh, join the Minnesota Women's Woodland Network. Um, that is a recent group 
that's been uh, developed and has been growing, and that's kind of to recognize and enhance the role of women in woodland management. So check them out. There's also some landowner cooperatives. Now the Minnesota Forestry Association has some smaller uh, woodland owner groups that we're looking to grow. Um, but one other one is the Central Minnesota Small Woodland Owners Association. They actually have a, a, a timber sale every year, an auction with, with different private sales. They lump them together. So if you live in Central Minnesota, there's an email address for a contact. If you live up on the North Shore, there's a North Shore Forest Collaborative. That's a great group. They're looking to restore um, some native trees, such as long-lived conifers along the shore where all the birches dine. So that's a great opportunity. Of course, you can become a master woodland owner. That was a new program launched here recently by University of Minnesota Extension. And also the tree farm system, which a lot of you heard of. Um, become a tree farm. Also, attend a landowner workshop. These come up periodically. There's one that's coming up soon, which I believe registration may be closed. But the point is to know that these workshops are out there. And there's one here coming up in Iron Junction. And you can see the flyer on the right, and it's about harvesting for forest health and wildlife. Now, these are great opportunities to connect with other landowners and people, um, forestry professionals. And also, attend the Minnesota Forest Resource Council Regional Landscape Committee. So the Minnesota Forest Resource Council, that's an organization that, that was established to help provide direction for forest, forest resource uh, information in Minnesota and guidance. And so they have a, a regional landscape program where they have regular meetings around the state on a regional level, and those committees are made up of landowners, different resource professionals from different agencies. So if you're a landowner and you want to get involved and you want to voice some concerns and opinions and, and, and be enthusiastic about working in your woods, definitely attend a meeting and Google MFRC Landscape Committee. And finally, the most important thing is to take action. Okay. If you don't have a woodland stewardship plan, get a woodland stewardship plan. I talked about that earlier, and so in order to do that, what you should do is you should contact an, an approved Minnesota stewardship plan preparer. And if you Google Minnesota stewardship plan writer, here's, a, here's what you would get. This is on the My Minnesota Woods page. And what you'll get is a map here, and you can go around, you can, you can click on an icon where, the, where all the plan writers are, and you can get their contact information and call them up. And, and tell them you're interested in a plan. And again, there's that $300 incentive payment that's available until funds last, until June 30th of 2017. So even if you've started a plan and haven't completed it, you're still eligible. So take advantage of that. And get a project plan. And if you want to get a project plan, I encourage you right now, there's funds available to contact the DNR CFM Forester. This map right here is where our foresters are located. You can see their work boundaries. So take a look at this map. Determine where your land is. See who's the name that's associated to it, and there's a phone number. So again, and this could be your contact for, for any of the programs that I have mentioned here today. You know, DNR Forester, we're here to help you. We're here to point you in the right direction. And so if you still are unsure of some things, you know, this, this would be the, the place to start right here. And so get a project plan, contact your DNR CFM Forester. And then once you have the plan, install the project. Okay, and you can do that work yourself, but a lot of times you need professional assistance to do that. So contact a private forestry consultant. And they'll, ins they, they, they'll actually install and also help you design a forestry project. Of course, they also do well in the stewardship plan writing, like I mentioned. And if you're also thinking about a timber sale, contact a private consultant to help you with your timber sale to make sure you can get the most uh, value out of your woods. And they're also going to be, uh, they're, they're looking out for your goals. They, they want to design that timber harvest to meet your needs. So on places where you can contact a private consultant, there's the Minnesota Association of Consulting Foresters. There's also several consultants that are listed as approved stewardship plan writers. And then there's also some of them that are Society of American Foresters certified foresters. And if you want to go right to a logger, let's say you, want, you know you want to do a timber harvest, you're comfortable with going directly to a logger, I encourage you to do that also. And, the, and a good place to go for that is uh, through the Minnesota Logger Education Program, MLEP. And they have, and there they have a list of trained loggers that go through uh, annual training of credit hours. And they also have a Master Logger Certification Program, which is a higher level of training for loggers. So that website is mlep.org. 
they also have a lot of lot of great information for landowners other than just loggers on there. So definitely check out that website. And I didn't mention this earlier, but DNR Wildlife also has private land specialists. And so if you are looking for some specific advice, you know, particularly maybe for wetlands and brushlands uh, primarily, but also for forest land, you can you can get a hold of a DNR private wildlife specialist. Google MNDNR Wildlife Private to get a hold of them. And of course, all the other the federal agencies that I mentioned for EQIP, CRP, CSP. So those are going to contact NRCS and FSA for those programs, or uh, SWCD for the county cost share. So that's all that that's that's primarily the services that are available out there. It's it's a complex world. So like I said, if you're still confused, contact the DNR Forester. But otherwise, hopefully you got some good information where now you can uh, you can get active in your woods and and help uh, practice good forest stewardship. Great. So, well, John, thank you. That was a good presentation. I'm not seeing other questions today. I have a feeling you might get some email uh, in your inbox when you get back to the office, but um, that was great. Covered a lot of ground. Um, you want to close it out? Yeah. Uh, thanks again, John. Uh, thank just you. as a reminder, uh, we're going to be following up with an email with some of those links uh, that John mentioned to folks that have registered for the webinar. Um, and also there'll be some continuing education credits, I think, that Julie has, has mentioned. Uh, I wanted to look ahead to next month. Uh, on October 25th, uh, that's a Tuesday at noon, uh, Dr. Lee Freilich from the University of Minnesota is going to be talking about oak and fire in Minnesota's forests. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that um, and talking about fire. Uh, but again, thanks to John for uh, this great webinar today, and hope you enjoy the rest of your Thursday.